Joining a professional organization is a great way to meet people in the industry, stay up to date on new developments, and network with other professionals. In today's episode, we're going to give you all the facts on how to get the accountability group that is here to help your career in the long run. Hi, everybody. It's Samantha and Chanel, and we're back with another episode that you don't want to miss on the Deeper Than Tech podcast, where we talk about how to grow your career in an industry that was not designed with us in mind. You all already know. We'll be diving deep into this topic, but before we do, if you're loving this podcast, make sure you go like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Um, let's get started. So... Everybody has their own definition of what a professional organization is. Chanel, what do you think a professional organization? How would you define it? Oh, such a good question. Professional organization is a space or a community of people who are gathering or, again, just members of the specific space that serve to a specific discipline in their career or a different aspect that they are looking to continue to develop. So, for instance, if you're an engineer, perhaps you want to join they have color who these this community specializes right in black engineers and technologists specifically that are looking for a community to continue to build again connect and grow there's also professional networks like uh black women talk tech there's more like a conference kind of platform but they do have different communal bases where you if you are a black woman and you want to talk tech and you are a business venture capitalist all the things entrepreneur there's your circle of sisters okay <laughs> And so on and so forth. Does a professional organization only need to be in person or can they be more virtual? Do you need to have a membership? What do you think? That's a good question. I'm going to say professional networks can be all of the above. Some professional networks and organizations will ask for you to have or pay dues. Some are just here for you to just have community and they don't have more formal programming. It's just more so for folks to connect and share resources. And then also there are spaces where things are virtual and also in person or maybe now, you know, hybrid is our special favorite word. So you have opportunities there connect and grow as well. That's so funny. Like we all have these like new words now, hybrid, <laughs> hybrid, hybrid. <laughs> so you mentioned that about Dev Color. That's actually how me and Chanel, we met at a Dev Color event where there's black engineers. We get in small groups and then sometimes they have larger groups where everybody could come together. We met at a dinner. The food was great. Thank you for sponsoring into it. <laughs> the dinner, that was good. <laughs> we like uh, ate all the short ribs. Like Absolutely. they had none left. <laughs> It was good. But also mentioned that sometimes you pay dues for um, organizations. In Dev Color, we pay a due. It's not as big as like, it's $400, which I think is a good price for what we get. Do you find that paid organizations versus free organization, is their quality different? It depends what you're looking for. So if you're just looking for a community of people to just, you know, share resources to or connect, then you would want to join something more free, like a LinkedIn group, Slack group, group me or whatever have you. But I do feel like you do get more intentional value. And I'm not going to say authentic because I feel like both platforms are authentic, but I'm going to say more intentional spaces when you do pay because everyone there has the same mindset and drive enough to pay, which means that they're here to really make sure that they can either help the next person or be the person that is getting the aid and help and support as well. So I definitely would say if you are looking for something that's more like communal, do you just want people to just talk to, then go, you know, the free route. But I think the best bet would be to be a part of platforms that you, again, you might need to invest in yourself, which we should always be doing. But I promise you that when you do invest in yourself in that capacity, the amount of overflow that you receive. I mean, I found such an amazing community within Dev Color. They have done so much. Again, even that dinner, right? Like, I know that dinner was thousands, you know, well, that ain't none of my business because I don't know how much they spent. But I'm just saying, it wasn't a little 400 you know what I'm saying? It wasn't no janky dinner. Because we could eat. <laughs> okay. We could eat. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> and then on top of that, even like the swag and the different experiences that are created and, and given and literally the way that they develop program within Dev Colors when it comes to building community is intentional. You do life together and you share about the things that are great. You share about the things that may not be so great. But guess what? When you share about it and you communicate, you get help. So it's not just a space where people will just post and then you're like, oh, no one responded. Honey, if you post, somebody going to like, comment, and subscribe to that post, okay? <laughs> 
Yeah, that's one thing I love about Deaf Color and the, how it's paid. There's, of course, there's other paid organizations. We're just focusing on Deaf Color because that's what we're both in currently right now. But I love paid because I know at the beginning of the year, these people are going to be there to the end of the year. Every once in a while, people drop out because of people have life. But like, I know I have friends that were I met at the organization four years ago, and they're still my friends today. Like we travel and we do all this stuff. So like you build those bonds with those people because we're all committed to like grow and we all show up when we're supposed to show up. So that's awesome. What other benefits are there to joining a professional organization? Wow, there's so many. Having direct, intimate contact or connections. And when I say connections, I mean, these ain't people on Facebook that you have to wait for them to respond to your message or accept your request. In this community, you have full visibility of people's emails, phone numbers, locations, companies, and you have more leeway to really get in touch with people who are actually in spaces that make a difference for, you know, you to be able to even get an interview. Um, let's say if you're trying to move to a specific role. Same thing, too, when it comes to maybe even talking about salary right? Maybe you have financial goals that you're trying to meet and not the salary range that you're currently working for. It ain't doing what it's supposed to be doing. And so being able to have a community of people who are comfortable with communicating those things with you and giving you the language that you need to communicate those things to other people is so important. You know, obviously we love the swag and Dev Color Honey will swag you up in a minute and I'm here for all of the things. Swag, swag. <laughs> Look, I, got I my love it. Right here, my <laughs> so that's also obviously exciting, but I think it's even more the greatest of them all. Again, is the quality of people that you meet actually authentically want to do life with you. It's different when you're just reaching out for a referral, and you know, you it's just like a one. And, I don't want to say one and done, but like you know, nine times out of ten, it's a one stop shop. But when you have people in a community who have the same heart you have, who have the same drive you have who are looking to do and give back in the way that you desire to do the same thing. I mean, the opportunities are endless. I know for me, like I've had a couple of mentees even get jobs just because I have connections in Dev Color to ask. So it's important to be able to have that kind of network because that is your net worth. Love that. That's awesome. One of my squad mates, that's what we call our small little groups. Actually, we shared salaries with each other. And she was making like half of what we were making could it combine. So we were like, girl, you got to quit your job and get a new job. And she did. And now she makes more money than all of us. So like having that support I'm system <laughs> is so important. <laughs> <laughs> I love that it. That is so powerful. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So another thing that we take a lot of opportunities from the organization, but how can we make an impact while being part of one? Oh, girl, man, oh, man. So it's important for us to be able to provide impact. And honestly, the way that we do that is by doing the things that we're just naturally good at. Your natural born gifts, honey, the things that you can do without having to even sweat about it. So I know for me, I love people. I love community. And I love for people to know like, I'm a natural born connector. So that's what I'm going to do. So for instance, for me, let me say this too. You're talking about how can I provide impact or value within those organizations? Correct. Okay, yeah. So for me, you know, because that has been a part of my personal brand, uh, now folks will say like, hey, Chanel, would you mind hosting specific dinners? Hey, Chanel, would you mind being on specific councils or whatever the case may be? And so folks will kind of see that because that's what I live my truth in, right? But let's say you're still trying to find and figure out where your truth lies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's important for you to I think it's important for you to just try something right if there's something that you wish you can do in a perfect world and it wasn't anything that you necessarily needed to be paid for or wasn't anything necessarily that you needed to uh, anything tied to it that you would just love to do in a perfect world and life would be good. You don't have to worry about no bills. Lean into that space. Lean into that space. If you just love organizing events be a part of that space and say, hey, do you all need any extra hands with organizing upcoming events? If you're a person that loves to look getting feedback from people and you wanting to make things better, you might be a person that always identifies things that are just not that great. You know, maybe everybody like, oh, this is great. And you're like, honey, he ain't, he ain't say hello to me. He ain't take my coat. You know, you're always thinking about the experience. Maybe that can be something that you implement and saying, hey, I want to be a part of the team and how I can, you know, impact the user, the, the user, the attendee experience or the community experience 
experience by maybe in implementing, you know, surveys or making sure that when we do plan events that we have folks feeling appreciated and loved and seen and valued. And that is a gift, you know. Maybe you're an advocate, honey. Your friend group know if anything happened at a restaurant that ain't right, honey, she going to say something about it. OK, that is people that we need. So when we're in, you know, spaces where we're either pitching or where we are in, in uncomfortable situations or if we need a leader to be ahead over something, that's where your natural born gifts will come out. And so I think it's important for you to lead there. Don't lead in like in the space of like, oh, I want to be this. So I'm going to go for these roles. Do what you naturally do so well and let your gift make room for you. So I know that you are an organizer. You did a great job organizing the dinner for us. Do you have any tips for people who want to start organizing? or putting together their own organization? Absolutely. So I think it's important, again, to have a plan, right? I think it's important for you maybe to write down, like, what are the goals that you want to accomplish from said event or said organization? And maybe find three. Like, this organization is going to address three things, or this organization is going to make sure that our attendees or our members feel these three things. And then build upon that. Maybe point one is, I want to make sure people feel seen and heard. So what does that look like? Does that mean you're going to have a community board where you highlight, you know, a spotlight member? Does that mean that you're going to have a newsletter where you ask one member to share their story? Does that mean that you're going to have a specific space on maybe on a LinkedIn profile where you shout that person out and you talk about how well they've been doing? So it's important for you to kind of think about that. And then once you figure out exactly what you want to do in order to, again, go back to that specific truth, like that core value of how your organization is going to show up for your members. Now you can begin thinking about, OK, how are we going to implement this? Are we going to implement this once a month? Is this going to be twice a month? And then you think it more so in the, the strategy of it, of it all. <laughs> but I think first and foremost, it's important for us to lean in with the planning of it all. Wow. So many great tips in this episode, like why organizations are so great. Thank you all so much for joining us on the Deeper Than Tech podcast. Until next time. Bye.